So here with Penny Baker, the Deputy Chair of the Safer and Stronger Community Scrutiny and Policy Development Committee, the Liberal Democrat Councillor. Uh, so what's the role of the council at the minute to combat homelessness? The role of the council? Well, under our housing department, we have a legal responsibility to uh, home people. Uh, it varies depending on whether you're talking about a family um, or someone under 18 or a single adult with no responsibilities. But it's covered by the statutes and uh, we work really hard, no matter what age, ethnicity or um, whether they're a family or a, and I've lost it, a family or um, an individual to make sure they get accommodation as soon as possible. We work through our private sector housing homeless division. Anybody who presents us at Howden House or rings on the numbers that are available on the City Council website or through various charities to make sure that nobody needs to be on the streets of Sheffield and High. In regards to the housing, you mentioned a bipartisan uh, bill that you're working on at the minute. Could you explain more about that and the role that that plays? Yeah, um, uh, quite simply, a petition was brought back to the council suggesting that Sheffield needed a night shelter. We were not at all sure that that was the case. So the cabinet member um, for housing and neighbourhoods, Councillor Jane Dunn, uh, asked the scrutiny board if they would set up a cross-party working group to look at what is available in our city, um, look at what gaps there might be in the care that's offered and what we could do and what we need to do in future to make sure that anybody who finds themselves homeless in this city is well supported. So you once mentioned that uh, last year that uh, advice should come from experts. What do you mean precisely by that? Charities or people who uh, have backgrounds in homelessness? People who work with homeless people, really. And in Sheffield, we have a load of charities, some fabulous church groups. We um, have the Cathedral Archer Project. We have St Wilfred's. We have... Um, lots of kitchens and we have the people who walk the streets, the ambassadors, know by name everybody in the city centre and their dogs' names as well. And one of the wonderful things is if uh, somebody who normally lives on the streets is offered a bed, then so is their dog. Their dog is not left to wonder either and if they can't go together to the bed that's offered, then the dog will go in a kennel. So we don't also look after our four-legged friends as well. Uh, a, uh, a policy recently uh, has worked in Finland called Housing uh, First in mm -hmm. eradicating homelessness there. It's been put to trial in this country and has been for the last uh, few years and the effectiveness of it has been mixed. What do you make of Housing First as a way of combating homelessness? I don't know about Homeless First. I haven't come across it before, so I will now be looking at that. We have a housing plus policy in Sheffield, which is, I don't think, quite the same thing. We do want people to have homes. We do want them to have appropriate homes for them that are, where they can feel safe and stable. Not everybody does in four walls. And even if you provide somebody with the flats, there can be times, because of their issues they may have had in, had in the past, that they just can't sleep inside and they might be found sleeping outside. Now, the police who do a sweep every morning uh, around the city know these people. And in actual fact, if they see them there, they check they're healthy and well, and they may just walk off and leave them because they do understand. And others will be directed to wherever they need to be directed to get a, whole, a safe bed for the night. Also, have you heard of the... Um, new thing that they've done with the fire brigade? Uh, not 100% sure, no. Not that, no. no, fire brigade, they've just trialled it. Do you know when we had the really cold nights lately? Yeah. Working with one of the local charities, the fire station in the city centre opened at night for anybody who was on the streets so they could just go there. So that was a very safe and secure place for them and it, they were supported by one of the local charities that works with uh, homelessness as well. But the fact they actually have that means that there's a problem in itself, I guess. There's always a problem, and when it gets really cold, the people who normally would be left by the people, the police or the ambassadors, 
or the other charities that walk, and I can't remember the name now, but that's the way they walk, walk the streets at night, and because they, some of our councillors, I'm going back a bit now, but some of the councillors on the working cross-party working group went out and walked the streets of Sheffield between four and six in the morning, and they did the rough sleeper count. And they looked at where the people were, they checked they were all right, they offered them beds if they needed them, they directed them where they could get hot food if they needed them. Um, and they made sure um, that there was nothing unusual out there. Uh, and they saw for themselves and came back and reported back to the cross-party working group what they actually saw with their own eyes. What about the role of the private uh, rented sector and the role that plays uh, around homelessness and uh, falling, uh, falling uh, wealth and how that can play? Uh, you mean, really, it's the, it's the level of rents, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the quality of housing that's the problem. We are working very hard in this city with the uh, private sector housing. And we know that there's a licensing scheme in Page Hall. Uh, so every landlord has to have a license. And they're looking at doing the similar licensing scheme um, in the London Road area as well. We have a very good private sector housing department who um, makes sure that anywhere is um, li licensed appropriately that needs to be done. We very rarely use bed and breakfast in Sheffield. We um, have to occasionally, but there's no other accommodation available. Uh, but some years ago, we used it quite a lot. Something that we did when I was cabinet member for housing was that we set up a scheme where anybody under 18 wouldn't go into interim accommodation. Interim accommodation is temporary accommodation that we offer for people who find themselves in a situation. Uh, one of the multi-storey tower blocks near the university roundabout is interim accommodation. Um, it's manned 24 hours a day. But we found that there were people, 16 and 17 year olds there. We felt it was very inappropriate. They're only kids. I mean, they shouldn't be in that sort of situation. So some work was done with Roundabout, who you've already spoken to. They, any, anybody in that age group now who presents homeless, there is a policy to work very hard with them very quickly to try and get them home, if home is a safe place, safe place for them to go. If home isn't appropriate or a safe place to go, they go to Roundabout, where they're mentored, cared for, in an appropriate environment um, where they can get any help and support they need. To, to what extent would you say that you feel that this is a problem across the city? Not as much as it used to be, but it, it's still there. And there is a concern, a very big concern, with the way the uh, welfare reform isn't going, that we might have more young people out there and we must try and work hard and make sure they don't. What about the idea of evictions, when people are actually in the houses and they have to be forced out because of the situation they're in, uh, the structural side of uh, where it's outside the families, uh, the wrong is essentially, and the, that, that's not the influence, the influence is essentially the, the, the monetary side of things. How how how's the council helps in regards to that? Council policy is that nobody would be uh, evicted because of rent owing regarding things like the bedroom tax or the new welfare reforms. That's in black and white, that they would be helped and assisted but they wouldn't be evicted. If people are evicted for whatever reason, and sometimes it's because they are in, in themselves a nuisance, we have still got, in a lot of cases, but not every case, a statutory requirement to rehouse them. So basically you're moving them on really, which is, you know, swings and roundabouts, and we'd rather not be in that sort of situation. The Housing Plus system that's in now means that there is um, housing officer responsible for a relatively small area of the city and the council housing side of it and they visit regularly they try and do an annual visit for every property to help and support and the idea is to try and see problems coming and deal with them before they actually get worse. Do you think it's more down to building more houses? Or do you We've got to. We've got to have more houses. We've got to make sure that the houses we've got are of a decent quality. 
We've got to have a standard that is safe and there's no red flags. A red flag is a warning like uh, perhaps the um, gas boiler isn't appropriately safe or something like that. It's a danger sign, a red flag. Every property a young person or any person goes into in this city should be safe and secure and clean, I would like to think. But, um, and, it, and that's really quite hard, not in the council sector, but in the private housing sector, as you said earlier. There is work being done on that. I won't say we're the best place in the world, but I certainly think we're not the worst. In regards to the, the numbers, homelessness spent at the end of last year, council released figures where homelessness dropped by 60%. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first thoughts on that when you saw that report and do you think there's much more which needs to be done in actually making that drop even further? There's always work that must be done and as our population increases problems will increase. So it's always something that's got to be revisited. Um, we've always got to check that whatever is done is uh, appropriate from now. Um, things that were done 10 years ago wouldn't work now in some places, and we've got to adjust to, to that. Uh, one of the things that's making a difference to the housing stock in Sheffield is all this purpose-built student accommodation that's going up. It is actually leaving some of the older, bigger houses available. Um, and then there's an issue, are private landlords going to deal with the properties appropriately? Are they going to be left as a whole family home? Are they going to be converted to flats? It's all things that have to be dealt with under planning. Um, so then you go from housing to planning, and that's government rules, and that is quite a complicated procedure. How complicated do you mean by that? Um, planning law is set by national government. We have very little leeway. If we make a decision, and there's been a planning meeting this afternoon, where various planning decisions has been made. Um, if somebody believes that one of those planning decisions was incorrect, they can appeal to government, and if they're successful, then the council has to take the cost on of that appeal. So that means that planning councillors have got to be very sure that they're sticking to the letter of the law. So we... Um, I've never worked as a planning councillor. And finally, if you've got a message to anyone who's currently uh, on the streets and has been on the streets for a long time and wants to uh, get into the, the comfort of a house or a flat or somewhere where there's just four walls and a roof, what would, you, what would your message be to them? Very simply, we're here to help. You know where Howden House is. Just talk to an ambassador, they'll take you there. We're here to help. Is that all right?